Hello, welcome to Infinity. We've got another free macro for you now, and this is in the Dave's HSL variant set, and it's the HWB, which is the hue, whiteness, and blackness. So this is kind of like another colour model, which is another way of thinking about colour, and in particular what's happening to the red, green, and blue, and the relationships between them. To download this, just go to the link below, and you can either drag or drop the .af macros file on here, or you can go to the library here, which we will find through View Studio, and you click on the hamburger up here and import macros, and you'll get it that way. So, hue, whiteness, and blackness, what does it do? First of all, let's have a look at what exactly it is. So I'm going to get a rectangle tool here. I'm just going to draw myself a rectangle up here for colour, so it's next to the colour thing here. And so I can basically bring down here any colour at all I like. And it's made up of the red, green and blue values here. And you can kind of divide this into three zones. You've got the bit below the minimum, which defines the whiteness, the bit between the minimum and the maximum, which defines the hue, and the bit from the top to the maximum to the, the end stop there to 100%, and that defines blackness. I can show you this in practice. If I hold down the shift key, I can drag things down here. So as I drag this down, as you can see it's getting darker, and it's getting darker because the maximum is going down. If I turn the maximum up, it gets brighter. Turn it down, it gets darker. Similarly, if I go the other way, holding down the shift key as I drag this up, then the picture, the colour here is getting lighter because the gap here is getting lighter. So the question then is, can I sort of manipulate those independently? And that's what HWB control lets you do. The dilemma in, in this, and we'll see what we're doing with it, is that if I want to increase the whiteness here, we need to push this up here, do I do this by squeezing this, which effectively decreases the saturation of the colour, or do I do it by sustaining the saturation and squeezing the blackness, or some combination thereof? And that's the dilemma. So we'll just have a look at how this works here. So I'll just go to this one and delete that for the moment. I'll come back here. And I've just got three strips here, one of hue, one of saturation, and one of luminosity. You can see kind of what's happening here. So this particular is the monochrome elements of it. So I just click on the HWB, and it puts in just a single layer at the top here. This is a procedural texture thing, so you ignore the top stuff here, and it all comes down to the controls at the bottom. The hue is just like in the hue in HSL. So I can turn this up here, and it shifts these, it rotates these around, uh, and so on. So and that is that makes a significant difference when you're doing that. So mostly with this, you won't be using that. Mostly it's the whiteness and the blackness. So if I turn the whiteness up, but if I push this all the way up here, you can see here, now look what's happened, is the blacks have gone grey. So that's what it's doing, it's pushing the whiteness into the black. See, even there the black is not done. And if I go down here, then the black stays just fine there, and it pushes this down here, and it makes the whole thing darker, to the point I've now got black all the way along here. And that's by pushing, pulling the bottom layer right down affecting that whiteness area. The same sort of thing happens with blackness. If I pull the blackness up here, you can see in here that now the whiteness is turning to grey. So I turn this one up, and then I turn this one up. What you get is that all the blacks and whites are going to go to grey, and we'll use that in a minute. What we have as well is the a thing here which we say we're give, trying to keep the colour. So when we're stretching the white and the black, we're trying to keep the right colour in the middle. And we're keeping whites in black, blacks in whiteness and whites in blackness. It's better to see this in an actual picture because you can see it more clearly here. So here we have a fairly colourful picture. And if we put that in here and open this down here, then what happens? If I turn up the whiteness here, you get a whiter picture, but you can see here, it's like you're looking through fog. So what we can do here is if I keep the blacks in whiteness, as I turn that up, you can see that blacks are getting better. And often, turning it all the way up is the better picture. So now I can increase that whiteness there. So I've got a lighter picture, but it's retained the blacks in there, so it looks okay. 
Also, I can t keep the chroma, so I can try and push the chroma up here, and that'll try and keep more colour. But at the moment, it's nothing much is happening, and that's because it, of everything's gone to keeping the black, so there's nothing left to keep for the chroma. We'll see the chroma, how, how that actually works in a minute. So let's take that down and take this back here, and we'll do the same with the blackness. If I turn up the blackness here, you can see here then that's getting blacker you know, overall. So it gets darker. It doesn't go completely black, but it definitely gets darker. But I can keep the whites in blackness by turning these up, and you said you start getting a lighter picture until you get to the top here. Then all the whites have been retained, so you actually got a usable picture now. What you can do as well, you can do some sort of interesting things here as well. What if I turn whiteness and blackness up? What I get here now is a lot of grey because they're pushed, both pushing at the, at the middle. But I can push back outwards with the keep chroma. If I turn that up, you can see the colour starts to come back in. But you notice here there's a lot of grey in this. Grey then is useful because we can then go to the blend mode because grey effectively is invisible when you do a contrast blend. So one of the things like, so for example, if you do overlay, you can see the strong colour effect you have, or you can, you know, perhaps, you know, do something like soft light, which isn't quite so strong in effect. But you can then change that, of course, with opacity to have a bit less of an effect and then control it that way. So change those blend modes back again. What if I do something like, let's take that off. If I turn the whiteness up here, but then I take the white blackness down, that's going to almost increase the whiteness. So now, where there are monochromes, there are, there are white. So this again has an, an interesting effect. I can again turn up the chroma to see if I can keep more of the colour. You'll see how much you can get from that. Often turning things to the end stops is what you're going to do. And for that, because white there, you can look at, will this darkness happen here? Yeah, so, so then in the darks, we're getting more interesting effect as well. If you go down to the lightened things, you end up just goes light again. So these are quite useful things. You can even do things like colour burn, which normally would be quite a dreadful effect. But you can see the strength of effect you've got had there on the colour without it going crazy. And similarly, we can do the other way around if I turn blacks up and whites down. And I'll leave the keep the chroma up here. We've got a dark effect here, but then we can take the blend mode here and then go to the light and blends like screen and so on. And we're going to get interesting effects with that. So overall then HWB by itself is not that great because you get these effects. The whiteness tends to overdo it and so on. But when you combine it with the keeping the blacks in the white and so on and blend mode, you can have a quite a range of effects on your image. Anyway, that's it. Sorry for taking a bit longer this time, but I think it did bear demonstrating how it works. That's it and thank you very much for watching.